Well hello everybody, it's Richard here. Welcome back to the channel and it's an absolute smashing day today. We've had uh, it on record now that it's been the driest um, period so far since March until the end of May uh, on record, since records began in the United Kingdom. We've had um, extremely wet, mild winters, winter and a very dry summer up to now and um, Although things are going to alter by the middle of this week, um, the we were starting the week on the 1st of June today, and happy 1st of June to everybody, um, it's going to cool down slightly, there's more wind and rain coming from the east, but the rain level is actually going to be quite minor. And uh, today's temperatures was around, um, I suppose about 27, no, 27 degrees in the workshop garage that I uh, had open today and um, so yes yeah, so it's been really warm I went for my run this morning and uh, had an amazing time I just love it when the sun's out early and um, I can wear a, a running vest and have a really good run of five and a half miles along the river Medway which was fantastic and there were about uh, four people running in the other direction and people walking as well so um, certainly more traffic on the road across the bridge one of the bridges I run across uh, in in Maidstone when I run down into Maidstone so I noticed the traffic had increased slightly so things are getting slowly back to normal today um, the 1st of June is when the younger school children can go back to school if schools want to open and also uh, if parents want to send their children back to school there's no compulsion to do that and uh, a majority of parents did do that but there were some schools that had remained closed um, and it seems that class sizes are right down from 30 to as low as 10 or 5 in some cases um, and no doubt school head teachers will be staggering those lessons um, so these are the younger children these are reception class and year six i think the the ones that um, year one and year six that are going back at the moment so uh, things are on the on the on the improvement um, if you're new to the channel don't forget to subscribe and if you want to if you enjoy this particular video and also don't forget to press the little bell so you know the next time I'm broadcasting I've got a list of things I'm going to talk to you about today quite a lot actually sitting in the background um, and uh, the first thing off today of course is the press today's the uh, 1st of June and the reason this broadcast is happening is because it's a tuna day to keep COVID-19 away so I'm going to start off with the amount of deaths uh, I didn't uh, upload yesterday I do it alternate days so if you're uh, looking forward to the next one. The next one will be on Wednesday, uh, the uh, 3rd of June. That's Wednesday, the 3rd of June. So the on the 30th, the no total number of deaths in the United Kingdom was 38,489. That was an increase of 113 people that have passed away. Uh, today, the 1st of June, the total deaths have, have increased by 111. That's 39,045 people have sadly passed away. And of those, um, uh, those have tested positive, uh, 1,570 people have tested positive, and that's um, the um, estimated number is probably um, 479 um, uh, overall that are um, tested positive just today. Um, and in hospital, there's just over 7,000 that have tested positive to COVID-19. That's people in hospital as we speak. So still quite a high number in my view. And uh, so there, but um, no mention of uh, how many care homes. We do know anecdotally that um, testing is still a bit patchy in care homes for staff and residents. Um, some people are reporting to me that um, they're managing to get tests, but others are saying it's quite patchy. They've had nothing so far. And also protective, uh, personal protective equipment uh, is a bit patchy for some people um, trying to obtain it. So those are, that's the press today. Something else I caught in the press yesterday. Um, so, um, so lack of tests for medics is causing outbreaks, which is the headline there. But also, more importantly, um, there's this remote piece of technology, and I'm very much into technology and how it can help the health and social care sector. And this particular piece of equipment is a mobile stethoscope, and that allows it to be played on an app and then that can be given to the doctor has the uh, phone with the app on and he gives the stethoscope to the patient in another room in that way you can actually test 
to see how patients are, and um, which I thought was a really good piece of technology and how that's um, how that can uh, save lives basically. Um, negative antibodies may not be a mean Im immunity to the virus is the headline there. That's quite an interesting article. And scientists work on tests to show who will suffer most from the virus. And there's a piece of work going on between Cambridge University and also the Aust in Melbourne University in Australia, which I thought was really good. So, um, but um, you will probably be able to find these articles online if you're, if you're particularly interested. But I thought it was worth mentioning a shout out there. Okay. So, um, yes, I'm doing a bit of clearing out at the moment. Uh, and tidying up because I'm going to have my lounge and dining room redecorated. I've got uh, Mark Golding coming round um, the second week in July and uh, so I was busy choosing colours today and he's going to bring along some paint pots to see what, uh, so I can test them on the wall. It'll be interesting to see what's going on. But I was doing some clearing out, um, so I'm just going to move these records. I'll talk about these later. So one of the things that I discovered, um, which I'm going to keep of course, is the Richard Overy um, Battle of Britain and this is an amazing book it's more than a book actually it's um I got this some years ago from the charity local charity shop and it's got a whole plethora of documents in here all about the Battle of Britain and some of them you can actually take out so they're a bit like they will be uh, actual cars themselves so for example we've got um, letters in here which are quite nice a slot in there uh, other bits and pieces that's going on. The Blitz, what else we've got here? Pilot's Notes from the RAF. There we go. And also um, other maps and so forth. Palavanavia. Palavanavia. And uh, it's a really good book. It's in hardback. And uh, so some really good stuff there. I was, I, I'd forgotten all about this, so I was having a really good look through today. And um, funny enough, Pathé News on YouTube show regular updates. And yesterday they were showing the update for um, Guy Gibson, the uh, six, uh, six, six. Uh, what is it? Uh, uh, the Battle of Britain squadron, I've forgotten, it's gone completely out of my head now. Um, but it's a 617 squadron, and uh, they, I remember that because I've got a transcription of uh, that particular newsreel. And they even interview Guy Gibson's wife at the time, Eve, um, who uh, makes a sort of clipped voice uh, announcement about how proud she is of her husband. Uh, and Guy looks so young. The film was partly 20 years after the war and then um, 25, 20 years during the war. Of course, Guy died in a very tragic accident over Holland, was where he's buried. So um, Barnes Wallace was on the uh, newsreel when he was reunited with the, Lancaster, the last Lancaster bomber, it said, and also with some of the pilots there. Uh, but uh, the newsreel then went back 20 years when um, Guy was actually uh, meeting the, the, qu the king then, and looks so young, and he's only twenty in his twenties, and uh, a squadron leader. So um, you know, and uh, had many uh, uh, advanced qualifications to his name then, DFC, and others. So uh, yeah, quite amazing. Anyway, a uh, Twitter on uh, the war on the home front is another one, similar vein, and uh, this again is by the Imperial War Museum. Another really good document in this very nice hardback. Reminds you of some uh, record albums covers these. Uh, this one is uh, particularly nice. Uh, so um, lots of really good pictures here and other bits and pieces. So yeah, uh, some of you may already got this sort of stuff yourself, but I just think that uh, as historical archive stuff, they're really really good. Um, and um, so really really good on there. Um, so yeah, worth collecting. Really collector's items. I think I got these two from a local charity shop some years ago. I should have used it really for the VE celebration, didn't I really? I forgot all about them downstairs. The other thing that I found was that um, another book here, Catherine Ferrier. As you know, I'm pretty, I'm very fond of Catherine Ferrier, and this is a really nice autobiography of hers. Um, talking, and it's it was given to it was uh, it was Mary D. Wilkes. January 1955 was presented with this particular book. Haven't got the dust cover, but um, even so, it's a really nice book um, and lots of historical documents in there. Uh, Catherine Ferrier, 1912 to 1953. It's a really nice picture of her there. This actual plate as does appear on some of the record covers that I've got of her as well. 
um, and uh, really very very nice so one to keep but I thought I'd put it with the books up here rather than down in the main lounge TV lounge the other two things I've discovered uh, this one's called wonders of the world uh, this is really quite an ancient document came out I think it was in 1935 I think it is on here Oh, 1933. This is 1933. Wonders of the World, 1933. And uh, obviously, it's like you know, obviously historical um, document here, and um, encyclopedia really of all the countries in the world. That one there, um, and the other one I've got is uh, this one here, which is they really are heavy. The story of the Western Western world in pictures. This one came out in. 1930. Dorothy Smart, March the 30th, 1934. Um, Dorothy Smart was, um, I used to be a landlord working for the, I used to manage all the housing for the Royal British Legion Industries at Aylesford in Maidstone. And Dorothy Smart was uh, one of my tenants and uh, she passed away and obviously these books were left in the house and so I rescued them. Um, I've decided that these two I've no longer uh, no longer need any more, and I just wondered if there's any of you out there in, as viewers who'd like to um, have these books, then you're very welcome to them. Um, uh, it'd be nice if I could just cover the postage because they are very, very heavy, um, and possibly a donation would be really helpful too. I did this with my my uh, uh, my Duckham's grease tin, and uh, Stuart has purchased that. And Stuart, I do hope you've received it because I sent it. I've got the receipt from the post office, so I hope you received that. But thank you very, very much, and I hope it's looking good sitting on your shelf full of um, trophies, as you mentioned in your little message to me on Facebook. There we go. So there's those things. Anyone wants those, let me know in the comments below, and I look forward to sending them to you. Um, okay, so um, video of the day, yes. I s I spent an amazing day yesterday uh, in between all the other things I do and work uh, watching um, the SpaceX take off from um, NASA, the Kennedy Space Station uh, Center. And uh, I didn't watch all the 19 hours in which the Dragon spacecraft was cli climbing and going up to the International Space Station. I didn't spend all 19 hours because that was, um, what was yesterday? Uh, Sunday, so it started Saturday. But I did actually watch the docking, which took forever, for three hours, to watch that. Um, on and off, I kept coming, flipping between channels, and then I watched that, and uh, so it was really good, amazing to see the guys enter um, uh, into the uh, ISS up there. And uh, there's already Chris was there, the uh, in commander, along with two Russian cosmonauts as well, and uh, the two guys that went up from ca from NASA first American astronauts to enter ISS to leave American soil in nine years. That's how long it was since the space shuttle uh, last took off and of course the space shuttle has now been uh, retired and uh, so we're into, into a great uh, period of commercial uh, space exploration. So uh, Elon Musk from uh, Tesla had funded this particular mission and uh, all I can say is it, it really went very well and uh, I look forward to uh, many, many more. The channel I tuned into on YouTube, which was live, is the NASA channel, and I'll put a link to that channel with some photographs. I took some amazing photographs of the of the rocket taking off, and I'll post those as we speak uh, from the television. So I took them from my television uh, set with uh, from my iPhone. So really lovely, but I'm really into space travel, love space, science, science fiction, and all of that, and I was really thrilled to get excited about um, this particular challenge. So really, really good. Uh, so, um, yeah, mention my run. The other thing is that um, I've managed to fit that um, uh, armrest to the car, to the to Grecio, my little Fiat 500 uh, 595 Prismo, and I'll post some pictures of it there. So much so that the Abarth um, group Southeast, the group, a Facebook site Southeast, uh, several people have been interested and I've managed to pass on the details 
uh, of the company from eBay and I've been in conversation with them as well because I noticed on the box it said there would be instructions included. In fact, the instructions weren't included and nor was the catalogue that came with it. There was a Q code which I tried using and I successfully did up download that but all that was, was just telling you about the armrest itself, not how to fit it. So, I mean, I used a, my intelligence and the fact that I'm a bit of an engineer and I used to use, make sure I got the right screws and um, I've confirmed with the company I bought, bought it off, a chap called Dave, that I had used the right screws. I knew I had anyway because the shorter, stubbier ones would go into the cup holder where it fitted and the longer ones would go into the actual post and the arm itself. <clears throat> and I'll post some pictures of it fitted for you to have a look at. So there we go. So mention the press, mention the telegraph. Oh yes, the other thing is I found some real nice, nice daisies when I went into uh, Waitrose and I planted them in a pot and I'll put a picture of that today. And the pot originally had some lovely daffodils and other and other plants uh, bulbs in there so I've just changed it and I've got these lovely flower pots. I did a bit of gardening today which is really good. Um, so I mentioned the space, mentioned the video of the day uh, and everything else. So the record of the day today is this one and uh, it's quite an old one I have checked this out and I can't find the year attached to this, but it's probably uh, late 20s, early 20s, I would have thought, uh, early to late 20s. It's on Columbia, it's uh, 3363, and it's the Mikado, um, A Wandering Minstrel Eye by Gilbert and Sullivan, of course, and it says speed 80 on here. Well, we know that the, um, soon after the early 20s, before, or just coming up to 1925, when the electric recording came in, but the standard speed was 78, but it, often they would say 80. So this is playing at 78, and it actually sounds fine. Um, and it's and the singer is Eric uh, Cortland. He's a tenor with orchestra. So I played this side, and then the B side, if you can call it that, is again a more humane Mikado. Again, um, Harold Williams is the singer on this side, and he's a baritone and uh, with orchestra. So I hope you like that. I've got another one of these. It's a really good copy by the way. Came in a plain cardboard cover. These are the original ones. Um, the other one I'm going to play tomorrow again is the Mikado and this is um, uh, this one's called a react reactive and aria alone and yet alive um, and hearts do not break by and it's Curie Harwin uh, contrato, and then the B side, if you can call it that, is the Sun Whose Rays by Violet Essex. Again, three three nine six. So, um, so that's uh, this one's three three six three, and this one's three three nine six. So uh, on there, and uh, that one's got three three nine six R. So I'm not quite sure why they've said that. Um, also, of course, you have a little tax stamp on these, so half a penny as it was in those days. But really nice copies, well looked after. They came as a set, which I'm really pleased about, and I'll, I'll play those. So that's the record of the day, or, or two. Um, and so you get two for the price of one when I don't broadcast every single day. I hope everybody's well. Thank you for your comments. Don't forget to subscribe and upload, upload your comments to me ring the little bell, share with the wider audience out there and I look forward to speaking to you on Wednesday the 3rd of June um, and see you very soon. So you take care, all the best, bye for now. A tune a day to keep the coronavirus away on the Columbia, Columbia label, the Mikado, a wandering minstrel eye, conducted by a uh, Eric Cootland, tenor with the orchestra. Enjoy!
On the Columbia label, the Mercado, a more humane Mercado, from Gilbert and Sullivan, Harold Williams, baritone with orchestra, on the Columbia 3363, enjoy. The punishment fits the crime, the punishment fits the crime, and make it business. 